Hey everybody, how's it going? Just gonna put this box down here and spill all the parts. We're gonna leave that in. Okay, <laughs> how's it going everybody? It is part 11 of how to port a power saw. Um, this is the last of the nuts and bolts of what to do. Um, thank you for following along. I really appreciate all of you that have that have been here following this series. Uh, a lot of new folks commenting on it. Uh, Welcome, everybody. Um, and again, this applies to dirt bikes, snowmobiles, um, motorized bicycles. A lot of the motorized bicycles of uh, guys have been coming over here. Um, I find it interesting. Um, and again, and on chainsaws. Now, what are we doing today? Today I'm going to show you guys how I put my top ends on. And uh, let's get the top end installed and buttoned up and then we can put a timing wheel back on this if you guys want. And uh, we can see what the final timing numbers are on this saw. And then we will let it sit and then we have to assemble the rest of the power saw. And now thanks to David Patterson, um, we have a lot of little nuts and bolts to change. This thing's basically going to be almost as new when we're done, which is awesome. Okay, so... In the last one, I showed you guys, we scuffed the cylinder and we cleaned it really, really good. Okay, everything is super, super clean, deburred, degreased. And then what I do is I lay everything out, okay, so that I don't have to fumble around. And uh, I was just going to say, guys, I need my moto seal. We'll grab that after. Okay, all of this has been prepped. I will wipe down all of my mating surfaces before we put the cylinder down. I'm going to bring you guys in close to the bench so that you don't have to look at me. You can look at the uh, this delicious power saw that's on the bench. And uh, let's get this thing rocking and rolling. Um, I'll show you where I apply oil and just generally what I do. Because the more info I can give you guys, um, maybe the more confidence you'll have to try this. Um, this also goes for rebuilding a power saw. If you're just swapping a top end, this is exactly the same process. Okay, I'll get you guys in close to the bench. Um, zoom you down here and you guys can see kind of what I'm doing. Okay, we've laid out everything onto a fairly clean towel. Okay, I like to use towels because if you drop something, it won't bounce off the bench. Now, first things first, I'm just going to wipe the rings down. Okay, just make them nice and clean. There is marker on this one ring, because remember we use that, we use that when we were laying out our, our port heights, right? So. Now, if your rings are super worn, you can at this point go and, uh, and replace them. This piston's in fine shape and these rings aren't too bad. Okay, we're gonna snap the rings on. First thing I do, put the top one on. Line it up with the, line it up with the pin. Okay. I'm just gonna roll this over the top. These rings have good tension still. If your ring's kind of floppy, right? And it's really easy to get on the cylinder or the piston um, I'd probably replace them okay so you just walk it over okay same thing with this side just walk it over a little bit at a time uh, where's my pick okay I'm gonna grab my pick here and I'm just gonna hook the end because it's stuck against that Okay, give me a second here guys again um, take your time there we go take your time and uh, don't break the rings because you, you can you can break one of these rings pretty quickly if you're so inclined um, anything that can happen will happen okay so I'm just gonna walk this over these fit nice and tight in this groove and I'll hit you guys back in a second okay there's the bottom ring on Okay, this is the ring, the, the locator pin. There's one on either side of the intake. Okay, this is the intake side. Your arrow denotes exhaust on all two strokes. Okay. Then we'll grab the other one. Same thing, I just lay it on there. Okay. 
Again, I'm just being extra careful. Um, I don't want to break a ring. Because then this project will be at a halt until I get a new ring for this thing. Or two new rings, rather. Okay, there you go. Okay, so just be aware of where your rings are. Okay? Now, make sure you can still see me. I got my bottom end here. Now, you want to decide which side are you going to drive. Are you going to drive the wrist pin in from, okay? In this case, I'm gonna go this way. So, I'm gonna take a little bit of assembly oil. You can use whatever two-stroke oil you want. Um, I use Optimal for everything. You guys ask me that quite a bit, okay? Now, I just started the ring on there. I just wanna get the oil into the groove. I'm gonna push it back. Right there, okay? Now, same thing. I'm gonna take my wrist pin bearing and I'm gonna oil it and I'm gonna insert it into the crankshaft. Okay, now try not to get oil on any of your mating surfaces, but once we get this piston on, <coughs> excuse me, we're gonna actually, we're gonna clean that. Okay, so if we're driving this in from this way, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take my circlip and I'm gonna insert it here. I like to lay my thumb over it so that it can't fling across the shop. Give me two seconds here, guys. Okay, sorry, I had to pause you there. This thing has the tightest circlips ever, okay? So just be careful. I lay my thumb over there. Uh, I'll try and do the next one on film, but uh, again, we're gonna re-oil the wrist pin and put it in this side. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we have our oiled wrist pin bearing. There we go, push this back in here. Now some pistons, the wrist pin is going to be super tight. Some is going to be a little looser. Um, I guess the tighter ones are probably better, but... Uh, th <laughs> Loose is easier to put together. Again, this saw is going to fight me tooth and nail. <laughs> okay, let's push this back out. There we go. What do we got going on here? Again, just don't be in a hurry, double, triple check everything. I'd like to push this through with my finger is the whole, is the whole idea. There we go. See, don't, uh, don't force anything. Because often if you force it, there's something going on and uh, you end up breaking something. Okay, I'm just going to pause you and finish driving that in. Okay, I got that driven all the way in. Um, put your circlip openings, okay, at the bottom. Now I'm going to try and do this. These things are super, super tight in here. And uh, I had just a heck of a time getting the other one in. Okay, I'm just going to try and get this seated. Oh, and I just dropped it. Okay, I'm going to pause you guys again. You get the idea there's a little groove in there and you want to clip it in just give me a second i don't want to lose this uh the the last one fought me for about 15 20 minutes okay well that was fun i dropped the ring about 73 times and uh <laughs> picked it up off the floor thought i lost it uh really 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 tight circlips on this saw which is fine they don't come out then you know what i mean but really really hard to get in i'm just wiping everything down because i've been touching this piston just making sure everything's super clean okay we're going to install the top end we got everything laid out take brake clean and i wipe down the mating flange 
we want to make sure that we don't have any leaks. Okay, we got our cylinder here. I'm just going to move this. Remember, we cleaned the cylinder up in the last video. Okay. Just giving it a quick pre-wipe. Now, what I like to do at this point, before I have my moto seal on, take a little eyedropper. I got some two-stroke oil in here. Put a couple drops on the main bearing. A couple drops down the side. That'll hit, that'll hit the crank bearings, okay. So now we know at the bottom end we'll get oil when we start it up. Maybe that's not necessary, but I like to do it. Uh, that way we know. That's usually why a new saw won't settle down at the beginning. It'll be kind of fat because you got to burn that oil off. Now I'm going to rinse my finger off. Okay. I'm going to take just a little tiny wee bit of oil and I'm going to put it on the tip of my finger. Okay. And I'm going to wipe that oil into the cylinder. Okay. Just to get it stuck onto there good. Because I want to make sure when we fire this thing up that it's not getting run dry. Okay. Now same thing. Clean my finger off. And wipe down this mating surface one more time. I've I've really never had a leak with Moto Seal until the other week there when it was too cold. So I made sure I got a good fire in this shop this morning, and uh, just want to make sure that uh, everything's everything's at at least room temperature. Okay, take my Moto Seal. This is about time for a new tube of this. Okay. And put a thin thin coating or slightly thick at this point uh, you don't need much of this stuff okay this stuff will typically make two to three thousandths on your squish so if you're looking for say 20,000 squish and uh, it's 17 you'll usually be right around 20 by the time you put this stuff on and you torque it down Okay, make sure you have a continuous bead all the way around. Okay. Put that on. Now we'll do the flange on the crankcase. Try not to get this stuff inside. It does happen. Usually it's fine. It'll just it'll uh, get burnt off in my experience. But still, try try your best to not get anything inside the motor. Because there's always that you know, one out of a thousand times, and if you have luck like I do, um, you know, you'll, it'll get stuck in the ring or something silly like that, right? So, okay. I like to work fairly quick with this stuff. Uh, this stuff, you don't let it skin. You put it together wet. Okay, and I notice there's not a lot of sealing surface on the front and, and back of this, so... I want to make sure that I have it on here fairly good. Okay. And when we put both of these together, they should seal down real good. Okay. Double check that your piston arrow is pointing to the exhaust side, which is right here. Just going to wipe my fingers off. Now, I like to, and you got to be careful when you do this, I like to take a little bit of oil, just a smidge. Okay. That might even be a little too much. And I like to rub it on the front and back of the piston. Okay. I want to make sure there's a lot of oil when I fire this thing up. Again, a little bit more. I'm going to oil the rings. Okay. Make sure they're nice and slippery in there. Now, this at this point, you want to make sure that your rings are lined up with the pins. Okay. Your locating pins. There's one here and one there. Make sure the gap in your rings are there. Because when you go to slide this cylinder on, you could break a ring. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure it's happened. Okay, I'm gonna grab my ring compressor. Can't remember if this is the right one. I think it is. I usually grab the. I usually grab the one that's the most worn. But uh, I, I I polish this thing up today, so it looks like it's new. Okay. Take our cylinder. I just hook my finger 
Oh, the ring slid out. Okay, I hook my finger underneath the piston. There you go. Okay, now I'm going to slide this all the way down. Okay, I did not put the intake on. I was thinking about it, but um, if we're going to time this thing, um, we might as well do it with no intake on so you guys can see. Nice T handles, eh? Finally get to use these things. These things are awesome. Okay, just going to go around in a cross pattern. I like these. The weight of these makes them spin a little bit better. Okay, put this here. Again, I like these to be tight, so don't be bashful when you're reefing on them. Make sure they're reefed right down tight, okay? Okay, there we go. We have a top end installed, oiled. Uh, I'm gonna let this sit overnight. Um, if you're picky like I am, you'll wipe away the extra moto seal. You don't have to, but it's just something that I do. Um, I like it to look like I was never in there. Okay, there we go. And we got all kinds of compression. There you guys go, uh, installing the top end. Uh, and like I said, I got a lot of little, uh, I got to change all these uh, guide plate, felling dog, and uh, I can't wait. We'll have this thing running sooner than later. Uh, we'll put a timing wheel back on it. I could just tell you guys the numbers too if you want. Um, I'll, pr I'll probably just end up telling you guys the numbers, where we ended up with them, and... Uh, there you go. Okay, I hope that sheds some light on top end installs. Uh, that's how I do all my top ends. No matter what saw size of it, whether it's ported or stock, that's how I install my top ends. I like them. I like them to be shiny, shiny, as clean as you can get it. Put lots of oil in there. It won't hurt nothing. And when you put it together, the chances of you having a failure are slim to nil. Make sure those uh, wrist pin circlips are in the groove. Try and move them. These ones are super, super tight. I was having a really hard time spinning them. So, you know, if you have a little hook or something, when you get it in there with, uh, with the opening at the bottom, uh, try and pull it out. Like, try and see if it's in there or not. If it's not seated in there, and you, you should be able to fling it out if you mess with it, if you can't get it to spin. You, know, you don't want those coming out. It does happen, but typically only with aftermarket clips or the ones with the little wings on them. The ones that you squeeze. Uh, those are great for installing, but the problem is they tend to uninstall themselves in the cylinder. So if you do use those, just cut those little tabs off and they, you typically won't have any problems. But Okay, well the Echo 670 is starting to look like a power saw. Um, I'm super happy. Again, I'm in, I... Usually I'll go around a couple times and I'll just make sure that she's tight. Um, I've never had one come loose, but uh, being a big fella, I probably over torque these. Um, never had a problem with one. Okay, how to port a power saw? We're we're still going. In the next one, we're probably just gonna have we'll throw this whole saw together. Uh, I'd like to do a wrap up on what we did to it, why we did it, timing numbers and all that. So stay tuned. I'm really excited to finish this project off. As always, thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later guys.